In Matthew chapter 8, verse 8, the centurion says to Jesus, Lord, I am not worthy to come under your roof. The word translated there actually means sufficient, enough, competent. And I guess what I've learned during lockdown is I'm not sufficient, not enough, not competent. And yet, that's the point. God takes us and uses us simply because we are who we are, warts and all, and that's enough. I've been thinking a lot about what it means to feel at home. Of course, at home is exactly where I have been. I've been working, I've been resting, I've been gardening, I've been baking. It's been at home. But I live on my own. And I have come to realise even more that my sense of being at home within myself is much more about my relationships, about my sense of belonging, and therefore not being able to see family and friends as much as I would normally do. It's been a real loss in that sense I felt a little bit homeless. So it's really reinforced for me that sense that being at home is about relationships and belonging, that um, your home is where your heart is. I think the last year has taught me that I need to pay attention to my soul, that for me to be good at what I do, I need to cultivate and look after my interior life. That things that we might classify as hobbies like music and art and watching films and getting all passionate about football and rugby, these things together with meeting up with friends and family and eating together and laughing together, these things are not time off activities because they are when I am most on. And they feed me and they inspire me and they energize me. As Martin Luther once said about music, my heart bubbles up and overflows in response to it. It has so often refreshed me and delivered me. Thank God for these things. I know that I need them. So what have I learned about God? Since I was a young child, my life has been shaped by reading the Bible and prayer. At my bedside with my parents as a child, and then the rhythm of prayer, the saying of the daily offices, the studying of scripture, has been part of my life. It's what has sustained my ministry. But I think during this time, I've learned something more about God, particularly about how I approach him, about paying attention to God, about coming to him and noticing his presence, calming, settling myself and listening long before I bring my own concerns, the concerns of the church, the concerns of the world to him. When I think about what I've learned about God during this time of pandemic, the first thing is that I've really learned that God's love is a constant, even if all around us is changing unpredictably. Even if, when we look at the news on the television, it seems to shift from bad story to bad story, to uncertainty, to unknown. In the midst of all of that, we can rest on the truth and hope of God's love uh, with security and with constancy. And I've also seen that love find expression in local communities. Who hasn't been touched by the ways uh, that so many people came out onto the steps uh, to cheer the NHS on Thursdays, or to work together in partnership with others to make the love of Christ, the love of God, a really known feature in the life of local communities at a time of such uncertainty and challenge. Because I've been shielding uh, so much of the year, I've been doing a regular walk uh, down the lane from my home in Shearing. Um, the walk has become extremely boring. I know every plant, every tree, every curve in the road. But actually one of the things that it's helped me with in my uh, reflections and my understanding of God 
is just the significant and huge detail uh, that there is in nature. Uh, I've taken pictures of blossom, of snow, uh, of rivers in flood, of uh, um, all sorts of other things that, that have just brought a fresh, um, a fresh admiration uh, for the detail of God's creation. Uh, something that has actually helped me to pray uh, as I've walked and something that has reassured me of God's faithfulness through this difficult time. As I reflect back on this brutal pandemic year, one verse above all others has stuck with me. It comes from the book of Revelation, chapter 3, verse 8. It's the words of the risen Christ to the weak and struggling church in Philadelphia. Behold, I set before you an open door that no one can shut. Our church doors may have been shut physically this past year or for much of that time, but God has opened many doors across this diocese and across the world during the coronavirus crisis. What I have learned very simply and powerfully is that it is God who is in control. I'm not. God has opened doors in hearts, in lives, and in homes as our churches have served the most weak and vulnerable in society and perhaps in this past year as i think back my own heart has been opened in ways to god that i hadn't considered before so god is out and about it is his world we are his servants and our job is to just seek the doors that God has opened and no one can shut.